Hi there and welcome once again to Get Indie Gaming and to our Kickstarter showcase for July. In this series we run down five of the most promising looking indie games seeking funding via the crowdsourcing platform. While you're here, please feel free to check out our brand new website via the card on the right hand side of the screen. Here we're going to have daily updates for news, reviews and indie game features. And with that cheeky plug, let's drop straight into this month's selections. First up for July, we have No Longer Home from Humble Grove. This one's looking to secure £25,000 sterling, which comes in at roughly US dollars No Longer Home began life as a small project soon after the two developers had graduated from the Campbellwell College of Art that draws from their personal experiences and uses an episodic approach to its overall story. Here, players will experience the daily lives of the two central characters while using a point-and-click interaction mechanism that modifies the story story as the plot progresses. Anyone interested in taking a further look into the game's design and play style can do so via free demo by way of a prequel to the main story that's available from itch.io. We'll drop a link to this within the description below. With the estimated date for a full release in July next year, rewards begin at £3 sterling with the usual name in the credits, development updates and art prints, and go all the way up to £2,000 for a guided tour around South East London to see the sights. Of them, our pick of the bunches the £50 adventurer tier where you're able to pick up a cute looking enamel pin of one of the game's characters. In any case, with the campaign wrapping up August 18th, with No Longer Home already having secured just under 20% of their target, there's still plenty time for the team to secure the funding they're looking for. Next, and our number four for this July, Farm Folks has only a few days left to go when this video airs, and yet it's already funded well past its 50,000 Aussie dollar goal. Having been in development already for over a year and a half, Overgrown Studios are looking to bring this farming RPG out towards the end of the year, and if all goes to plan, the game will also see ports onto the usual consoles as well as the PC. As should be fairly apparent, Farm Folks is a 3D farming sim that's all about growing crops, raising livestock, and building personal relationships relationships with an alternative 1920s reality. The game will feature 50 different types of crops, livestock and pets including cows, sheep, cats and 30 or so different characters to interact with and help them with their day-to-day -day lives. Sure, Farm Folks is set to launch within an already crowded space and yet there still feels to be plenty of room for this one to make its mark. Players will be able to personalise their character, choose what items to grow and which animals to farm and of course use this to drive profits from their sale. You'll also be able to go and do the odd fishing trip and mining excursion too, the latter being a key factor in helping gain resources to upgrade your tools and to increase their overall efficiency. Rewards include access to an alpha, copies of the soundtrack, pin badges, artwork, and if you fancy splashing the cash, nearly $5,000 will give you a seat at the executive producer's table should this take your fancy. As regular viewers will know, we're often suckers for a dose of the cutesy, and farm folks seems likely to have this in droves when it launches towards the end of the year. At number 3, Unspoken Chronicles Nora is a mix of platforming and puzzles that takes place within what the developers are calling a funny version of Norse mythology, where your character having been killed in a raid that went wrong, must prove their bravery to secure a place in Valhalla. With a demo ready to play that comes with around 25 minutes of gameplay, the style and gaming mechanics remind us of Raymond's origins and legend, with fast-paced platforming requiring a deft touch, together with the odd puzzle thrown into the mix every once in a while as you run, slide, jump, and double jump across the level with the use of spears to help you as you go. What works well here is the overall looking artwork and light 
waiting, together with the premise of a twist to the usual Norse narrative. Looking for 30,000 euros before the campaign ends August 7th, so far the team have brought in just under 5,000. If successful, the funds will go towards the overall development costs with stretch goals, including further language support and right at the top end of things, ports onto the consoles. Rewards aside from the game, with a digital copy coming in at 10 euros, include some fabulous looking artwork, t-shirts and the usual name in the credits, plus much more. Expected to ship towards the end of the year, we wish the team every success with this campaign, and while it might be a struggle, there's still a chance of success. In the number two slot in another game in the countdown that bettered its funding aims prior to this video going live, Crying Sons from the French team at Alt Shift looks and feels a spiritual successor to FTL, faster than light from back in 2012. Here we're promised a sci-fi roguelike where you're commanding a large spaceship as you travel the galaxy. Unlike FTL, Crying Sons is looking to add into such gameplay by the way of a strong player experience, with plenty of characters to interact with and missions to seek out both in space and on land. With a demo all ready to play, we're already keen to see how this one's going to play out when it gets its full launch towards the end of the year. We're fans of the art style, which mixes 2D pixel art with 3D models and HD special effects, and we particularly enjoyed the space flight mechanics with the controls feeling appropriately weighty, as they should when flying a space freighter. As this video airs, the team have almost doubled their goal of €25,000, and with more than a week to go, we would be surprised to see if this figure didn't go much, much higher before everything closes this July 31st. Crying Suns looks pretty spectacular and we very much look forward to playing this when it hits the shelves. In the number one position for July, King of the Mountain has us very, very excited. Based on the experiences and play styles of such games as Prison Architect, The Settlers and Rimworld to name but three, we're huge, huge fans of where this one might be able to deliver. Being a procedurally generated settlement simulator, your first task will be to build your home. That said, actually, your first proper task will be to choose your race from the available dwarves, humans and orcs, each having their own skills and limitations, so you'll naturally have to change and adapt your playstyle accordingly. Once you've got your home all built, you'll be able to set out and explore, and given that it's all procedurally generated, the map is done on the fly. Fancy going about your business without wanting to pick a fight? Well, that's no problem, and while weapons and fighting are said to be key to the certain areas of the gameplay, it will be possible to avoid confrontations and build your settlement via peaceful methods. You'll also be able to decide how you'll fund your settlement's growth. Will you go down the mining, trading, crafting route, or will you mix and match? all three of them. If all things go to plan, the choice will be yours. With a proof of concept demo available to play now, the timelines for launch are certainly perhaps more honest than usual for such campaigns, with an early alpha expected in February next year, with early access coming late 2020. Okay, so that's some way off, although we certainly applaud the developers' rocket jump technology for their candidness. As this video airs, the team are close to their target of £10,000 sterling, and given there's 25 or so days to go, we're confident to suggest the final total will be many times over their initial goals. And with King Under the Mountain, our runaway winner for July, it's time to wrap things up for this episode. Be sure to press that like button, and if you're not done so, subscribe while hitting that notification bell to stay fully in the loop with our indie game content. As always, and with anything of this nature, the usual caveats and warnings apply, given this is Kickstarter after all. Many thanks for watching, and look forward to seeing you all again here later this month for more indie game-related videos.